I received a somewhat unusual call the other day from my partners over at SolidWorks. They've partnered with this nonprofit organization called Magic Wheelchair. They essentially make these epic costumes for free for uh, kids in wheelchairs. It might be turning your kid's wheelchair into a Batmobile, for example. It's pretty interesting and epic, some of the costumes that they make. But in this particular case, they're wanting to help a college student and uh, she doesn't want a costume, but she wants this Doctor Who themed CAD workstation, like the ultimate CAD workstation. I'm going to let you hear more about Janica in just a moment, but the premise of the call was this. They had just finished this six, seven hour live stream where they designed a whole CAD station live online on SolidWorks' YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it in the description. And they wanted to know if I would take this design and actually turn it into a real desk that we could give to Janica. So I agreed to a conference call. Let's talk about what needs to happen. And that's when they dropped a bomb on me. Not only do they want me to build this desk, but they want to give it to her at 3D Experience World, which is in February, 2023. That's only about two months away, people. Whew. Looking at her face though, I said, challenge accepted. Let's build this Doctor Who desk. So here we have the original 3D model. I have not modified this yet, but a lot of modifications need to be made because this is not manufacturable as is. I mean, you can see that there's no connection points there. There are, you know, things that, that are just hanging free. I want to keep as much of this look as possible while adding in the supports and the features that will make this a usable and durable desk. As you can see, we've got these tentacle arms. Certainly 3D printing could make this, although this is bigger than any 3D printer I have. I don't want it to be made out of plastic. It needs to be robust. So we've got these two arms sticking out front. They look amazing. But if she's wheeling up to this thing day in and day out, there's a risk that she's gonna bump these. Certainly she's not gonna be popping wheels through the house. So she's not going very fast. Or, interesting idea, what if these popped out of the socket? What if it was loose enough that these just were designed to break away and then she could just pop it back in. I really love this acrylic platform here. I'm definitely gonna do my best to make this. Looking at this huge monstrosity in the back, this thing is just fantastic looking and I have no idea how I'm gonna build that. Maybe we cut it up into sections, 3D print the parts and then glue them back together. We also, again, wanna make sure it's robust enough to stand up to a little bit of abuse. I feel like the obvious answer is to 3D print the shell and then cover it with uh, fiberglass. But I have zero fiberglass experience, so it's really risky to take on a new skill like fiberglass and try to implement that on a project that's deliverable in two months. And then I really love this mesh looking thing on top too. So I'm also gonna do my best to preserve that. Probably gonna trace inside of this corner uh, some sort of LED to really make this thing glow and pop. It just look incredible. This second set of arms, I'm just gonna veto this right now. To create both supports for those arms and make them movable and drop down is, is a bit too much for two months. I think between this huge work surface here and these two arms, she's gonna have plenty of work surfaces to work with, so let's not make it more complicated than we need to within the time frame that we have. So I've been tinkering with this for a couple days now, and I've mostly just cleaned up the 3D model, and the part that I couldn't bring myself to delete is this stupid octopus, man. I really like the way those legs look, and I've been trying to think, how do I make that part of reality? I think it really sells the story, so how do I keep it? Well, I had this idea. What if I used a piece of plexiglass here as a bracket to support this leg. From far away, it looks like it's being supported by these what will be 3D printed legs, and they'll just sort of sneak around the plexiglass support. Don't know that that's gonna work yet, but I'm gonna give that a try, and this is where we're gonna start things. This is the design board for the project. 
This is where all of our reference images are, all our notes and dimensions. I'm just checking to make sure that all the changes I make are still in line with our original goals. At one point I noticed that the canopy was wider than the original design constraints that she gave us. So I had to make it a little more narrow and that's what you see me doing here in X Shape. Speaking of X Shape, this is a good opportunity to tell you about today's sponsor, SolidWorks, in case you haven't figured that out. SolidWorks is by far the most important tool I have in my toolkit. In fact, every project on my channel, except for the very first one, was all 3D modeled in SolidWorks. I love using this app. You have to know that by now. But you can get all the power of SolidWorks in the 3D experience SolidWorks for Makers offer which is just incredible. For $99, you can get SolidWorks for Makers and it comes with X Shape, it comes with X Design. These are online apps that you can use in any browser, anywhere in the world. You can access your model anywhere. So you see me modeling this canopy here in X Shape, but you can do the same thing, making these organic shapes with Sub-D modeling and then you can move that over to X Design or over to SolidWorks for Makers and then do your more traditional modeling, which is what you see me doing for most of this. On top of all that, you also get access to NC Shop Floor Programmer, which will allow you to do uh, CNC programming all with SolidWorks for Makers. There's only one catch. This is designed for hobbyists. So if you are working on an industrial scale, you can't cheat and get this $99 SolidWorks package. I'm sorry. For 99 bucks, you get the industrial power of SolidWorks in a hobbyist package. So here's the deal. If you use that link in the description, not only will you get 20% off of your already discounted SolidWorks package, you'll also be helping this YouTube channel. Normally when I build projects, they're you know just mechanical devices, right? They're machines, I paint them all blue. There's nothing intentionally meant to be beautiful about it. But when I look at this acrylic in these, uh, it's fancy pattern and this, it's beautiful. I think it's gonna look amazing. And 
that's not a feeling I usually have when I'm working on a project in my shop. So yeah, I think that's the best way to describe what I'm feeling right now. This is gonna look pretty amazing when it's done. I'm gonna be doing a lot of 3D printing for this project. This is the Guider 3 Plus. It's got the tallest print volume of the 3D printers that I have. Flash Forge sent me this printer for testing and after putting it through its paces, I decided I wanted to keep it. But even at 250 millimeters per second, I wasn't able to print nearly fast enough to get all of these prints done. So I ended up buying two more 3D printers as well as outsourcing some of the 3D prints and having it shipped to the shop. It's hard to convey how much time I spent working on 3D printing, reprinting things, and also tearing off supports. But needless to say, a lot of work went into 3D printing. <laughs> it survived. I was definitely most concerned about this part breaking during shipping and there it is. Okay, I've run into a little bit of a problem and this is actually a problem I anticipated when I was designing this and that is having locating features that interfere with each other. So for example, I've got locating features in this direction, uh, some here in this direction and some in that direction. And so these, when you're trying to go that way, have the part pushed out, which makes this locating feature not want to go in and, and so on. You, you really need to just have two, not three. Again, I anticipated that problem and I was moving the locating features around, but I was also changing the model a lot. So every time I made a change, I also changed where I cut the model to change the size of the 3D prints. And at some point I have these leftover features that I forgot to remove. So I'm just gonna remove it in post I didn't even need to tell you about this, but I like telling you about my mistakes because you absolutely will screw up. Don't let anybody make you think that these projects always go perfectly. Any engineer who tells you that their projects go flawlessly is either lying to you, which I hope they're not, or they have zero experience, which is the more likely thing. So anyway, we are going to cut off these locating features. I screwed up. I wanted you to know about it, but this is a relatively painless one to fix. Thank goodness. All right, let me get my grinder. I'm sure some of you are going to ask, what is the stuff that I'm using and why am I using it for this application? Well, first I wanna say this is overkill. This is an industrial adhesive designed for gluing up panels on truck trailers and things like that, like painted panels to aluminum and so on. I'm using it mostly out of convenience and because I already have it. So there you go. This is my buddy Brian from The Smuggler's Room. If you haven't seen his YouTube channel, I'm gonna put a link in the description. You definitely wanna check it out. This is the gentleman that's gonna bring this project to life with some paint in a way that I never could. So he's gonna make a corresponding video and that will also be in the description. You should watch it when you get done with this one. So we have a bit of an emergency here. This is the middle of the desk. Right here, you can see, you see that running stain? So the problem I ran into is the solvent that I use to weld this square tubing onto the back. I just didn't do a good job of applying it. Uh, quite frankly, this is the first time I've tried to do it. You can see how big that stain is. I, uh, I gotta fix it. This is half inch thick acrylic and it's way too big for my laser cutter. The problem we have is I've run out of time. I need to deliver this thing in like four days. The biggest problem with doing it by hand is I was concerned about having you know rough looking jagged edges around here if I do this with the jigsaw, which is, the only tool I really have that can give me this curvy shape across this much space. I've called around to everyone locally and uh, I couldn't find anyone. First, I would trace this original sheet onto my fresh cut sheet right over here, uh, buff the edges, 
and let's just hope we nail it this time. I've also got to glue on the square tubing again, but I'm not going to risk the acrylic solvent. This time I'm going to use a very clear epoxy. To avoid melting this really thick plastic, I have to go very slow. This is actually 25x speed. You know, it just dawned on me that I am boxing this up for the last time. Tomorrow, we're gonna be delivering this thing. That is, uh, that is pretty awesome. All right, just check the straps. Everything is good to go. I think we're ready to hit the road. This is pretty awesome. You guys ready to roll? Let's do this thing. Come on, seatbelt. All right. Road trip it is. About two thirds of the way through the project, we decided it would be better if we delivered it to our house. That way we could put it together for her and make sure everything was perfect. We show up at the house and it's go time. This is Dan Wagner from SolidWorks and he's here to help me finalize the assembly. It's really hard to explain all the feelings I'm experiencing at this moment. I'm finally seeing all of the parts come together. And even though I've assembled this before, is something about seeing the plexiglass and knowing that she's about to walk into this room and see this thing for the first time. The feeling is just incredible. Come on in. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's awesome. What do you think? I love it. You love it? I do. I'm I'm blown away by the like the detail work and, and the droids mm -hmm. and everything. And, Jeremy, take her through it, man. I mean, that's it's your masterpiece. <laughs> well, uh, there's only a couple of things that I really want to uh, point out. First, personally, I am super excited about <laughs> the tentacles like sticking yeah. out there, and, like that's just from the beginning. I just really was really excited about those. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out is that these do break away. Okay. So that's by design. They got magnets underneath, and so if you ever hit them, it's no big deal. You can just pop them back on. That's good to know. Um, and you've got control over your lights. So you've got all kinds of things you can do here in terms of color. Uh, there's a few settings for <laughs> making it dance to music and things like that. So these lights also change colors. You can brighten them for when you're working at your desk, if you want to dim them a little bit. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm, this is my first time seeing it too, actually, yeah. with all the paper off and it's like- I really like it, especially the lights you showed me that dim. Those are so helpful with soldering. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So helpful. I cannot believe this thing physically exists in life. Yeah. Like we saw a 3D model of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> but like seeing it sitting here in your room is just so different. It's so awesome. This definitely ranks up there as one of the most rewarding projects I've done on this YouTube channel. I think I'm gonna end this video by just letting Janica introduce herself and tell you how she learned about this project. And I came across a post by Magic Wheelchair stating that they were paired up with SolidWorks for Slug Me 7 and looking for somebody and requested that they wanted to do a desk this year, kind of change it up a little bit. So I commented on there a little bit about me saying that, you know, I went to Purdue, electrical major, and that I also had a certification from SolidWorks. And then the director, she reached out to me. We had a lengthy phone call and she put me in contact with Dan Wagner at SolidWorks and we got started. So major nerd, love Dr. Who. Uh, over the summer, I was watching Dr. Who and decided to kind of start my own mini project where I was building a Dalek fridge from scraps around the house. And then when I got in contact with Magic Wheelchair to work with Select Me 7, on designing the desk, I got the idea. I'm like, what if we took and turned the desk into a Doctor Who thing? We had multiple possibilities. You have all kinds of villains you could go after, many TARDIS designs. Possibilities were endless and really ended up loving the overall design and ideas. And what do you think of the desk? I absolutely love it. With how I incorporated it at the face, we have the Dalek design the ultimate enemy, then the top, it resembles a good portion of what the command center of the TARDIS looks like itself. Great combination of both designs. I cannot wait to get my equipment on here and start working. 
this summer. That's awesome. What are you going to make on it? That is to be determined. You never know when you get bored what will happen when you have a bunch of random components in a toolbox. 